Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we have a special coffee on CCSP. Today coffee shots are more mapped to the domain 3 and domain 5 of CCSP. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. Thank you. Let's start with the first coffee shot. A significant new security update has been published to remedy a discovered zero-day vulnerability in the SSH server process of a cloud services which is hosted on any server. Due to its severity, all deployment and staking server must have this upgraded immediately. See whenever we go for any kind of an upgrade, we need a downtime. So which of the following is the best way to apply the patch and ensure all systems are configured consistently the keyword is consistently it means we need a same patch to be deployed in all the systems which has that service because that service is vulnerable for the ssh vulnerability so if you are a cloud security consultant what is your recommendation so option a update the set of configuration management script very good keyword script to include the latest patch and deploy in a one go by automation makes sense because that is one of the common practice if you want in a one go to deploy. Second is use the current tooling to clone the current server makes sense like you can basically deploy one update in one server and you can replica in other systems. Update each clone with the latest patch and shut down the original system but it will impact the operation. So if you ask me as a cloud security consultant I'm not going to recommend this because they're going to patch systems but they need to shut down the original system which might impact the business. Option C make a master list of servers that need to be patched okay and log into each server and apply the fix and being sure to cross each one of your list problem is that it's a good thing but if we have a thousand of servers and all that and deploying the updates it will be a time taken task but still i can reserve this c as a best answer D shut down all the server deploy a new one with the current patch using the server provisioning tool. This will not be a business decision because it will increase the cost and it also increase the downtime. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually adamant on C and A. I will go with A the reason why two things one configuration management bring the uniformity and with the help of script with a single script I can able to patch all the system with the automation manner and by this way I can able to cover more effectively and able to address the bugs in a in a recent in in a early time so always remember whenever when it comes to patch management in the cloud environment we always prefer automations instead of manual because manual is more prone for human errors and automation is faster where the human required judgment automation has a script which is already implanted and through that we can able to deploy the patches in all the system that's why the answer is a a for alpha Let's move to the next coffee shot. So who is responsible for the security of the hypervisor? Very simple question. But the keyword is responsible for the security of hypervisor. Cloud service provider, if you ask me, yes, it's very close. Like when I go for Amazon, Microsoft and all that, they're basically providing me an interface and on which we host our instances. Because keyword is hypervisor. We have a two type of hypervisor type one and type two. Type one is basically we have a bare metal on which we host and type two is we have OS on top of it. We basically install the um, VMs and all that. But primarily in the cloud, the primary is the service provider. But let me check the second option. The B cloud customer, they have access to their abstract machine actually. So B will not be the answer. Broker help me with the integration. We go for cloud broker service in that case when we need to mil integrate multiple services mostly in the PaaS and the SaaS environment. And cloud sales professional is the one who actually sales, uh, sell the cloud services. So he is not a technical in nature. So primarily the answer is A, cloud service provider and D is somehow part of the A. Next question is you are a cloud security consultant and SS cloud provider HVAC system heat ventilation air conditioning system it is a system which basically cooled down the servers and all that by which we can able to improve the availabilities of the servers because effective cooling is basically used to manage the 
cooling parameters in the data centers and by which we can able to improve the hardware and by this they can able to provide better services and by providing a better services they will be available and they are able to achieve the better uptime so question talking about you are a cloud security consultant and assess the cloud provider hvac system which report can help the cloud security consultant validate the adequate controls which is specific to the hvac system let me check the options we have a four option soc2 SOC 1, SOC 3 and ISO 22301C. SOC 1 definitely not an answer because it's talk about more like a ICOFAR, internal control over financial reporting. So when we're looking for their financial viability or when we're looking for financial visibility or company existence in the market with the help of financial sheet and all that we verify. So B will definitely not an answer. SOC 3 is a very generic report which we basically publish outside but it doesn't cover any kind of a control report it only give the opinion about they are SOC compliance <clears throat> so C removed ISO 22301 is more talking about BCMS business continuity management system but question was specifically talking about the control so I will definitely go with the answer SOC 2 because SOC 2 consists the five trust principle and one of the trust principle is availability for more information you can refer the CISSP dummy guide so answer is SOC 2. Let's move to the next coffee shot. So Aspirance technology consume IS services. So that for sure we are using IS services like in Amazon we are asking about instances and in Google we have instances easy to instance in Amazon. So they're talking about Amazon, Aspirance technology consume the IS services from a cloud vendor to host some sensitive application sensitive application mean they are more concerned about the disclosure of the data and all that you are responsible for isolating a traffic between the subnets because there is a possibility that the machine that we are hosting might be it is sharing with other companies tenant and because by end of the day they're sharing the same hardware so um, we are concerned about isolating traffic and another keyword is subnet so network should be able to communicate statefully. We need to maintain the stateful connections also by which we can able to maintain the state table with one another also. So which of the following should the solution will you recommend to this situation? ACL can be the answer, but ACL is a stateless. HIPS is limited to one host, which monitor more on the host level and application level data. DLP prevent the data exfiltration. Again, it doesn't provide any kind of a isolation traffic security so answer is basically configure security group security group is basically a stateful where the acl is a stateless that's why i'm going with the answer d d for delta because security group that we create in the vms by which one vm can able to communicate with others or we can able to isolate the traffic but they maintain the stateful connection about the sessions that's why i'm going with the answer d where the DLP HIP is more on the application level, which monitor the content level inspection. The keyword was isolating. If the question talking about preventing data exfiltrations and all that, I will definitely go with the C, which is called as a DLP policy. Let's move to the next coffee shop. So cloud provider has a several systems deployed in a cloud architecture. Provider requires to grant hardened virtual server image for provisioning purpose. The keyword is provisioning purpose. This will allow the user to use only the operating system service that are allowed by the provider because they want to control the configuration. So which of the following tasks are the most appropriate for the hardening process. So here the scenario here is cloud provider providing a system which is con configured with the hardened systems and all that. And the reason for the hardening is that to make sure, you know, it should not create any kind of an issue in the cloud environment. So provider is responsible for granting a hardened server. So as a consultant, what is your most appropriate process of hardening? The first option is disable logs. We never disable the logs because it gives me visibility about what is happening. Even in the maintenance window, we disable the alert and enable the logs so disable logs is def definitely not a good part of hardening process disable the command prompt it's required sometime for remote administration so we cannot do that uh, disable the automatic updates and unneeded ports and services that is the most important thing we have to do because if you enable the automatic updates what happens is you're randomly taking updates from the random systems okay and if you enable the unnecessary ports Okay, 
then it will create a concern so if you ask me as a hardening i will definitely disable the automatic updates i have to verify manually all the updates and all that with the auto signatures and and i need to disable all the ports and services which basically increase my tag surface option d is enable the automatic updates and disable the unneeded ports and services if you enable as i said if you enable it create a trouble that's why i'm going with the answer is c for charlie because if you enable the automatic updates it will take an update from a random servers and all that and by which they will install and it create an issue so what we need is we need to manually verify all the updates that's why answer is cc for charlie let's move to the next coffee shot so in which service model cloud provider highly manages updates manages encryption engine not a key secure storage auto backups and logging so if you ask me in bas there's nothing called as a bas even it's a backup as a service is basically part of a saas solution so d removed is in that they have a limited control over the encryption engine secure storage auto backup it is most lies with the cloud provide a cloud customer so if you compare with the saas and pass at least in a in an a pass still the customer has a control over the storage but in the saas we paying for the services in the back end the provider is the one who manages the engine key is with us but they manage the engine primarily they manage the storage they providing us read only storage with a defined config of storage they are taking a backups and they also enabling logging of their application because this is something they have developed that's why the answer is a b for beta so this is all from my side team and if you find this video useful do share your comments do share your feedback in the comment box and do share in your network thank you